What is up you guys, it's your boy Captain Jack. Welcome back to the channel. We are doing something that I absolutely love. It's my favorite, favorite tasting food. Favorite thing to do is diving for stone crabs. Now this is not for the faint of heart. You gotta stick your hand up in these holes, grab these crabs and rip them out, wrestle them and get a hold of their claws before they get a hold of you. But it is all worth it in the end. While I get ready to hop in, I'm gonna go ahead. We actually went out cobia diving yesterday and got a button, got a cobia. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll on clips on that. So. Stay tuned after that, we'll be getting into the stone crabbing. So this day started off great. We saw some birds diving and we found out that they were diving on these schools of little tiny glass minnows. And this was looking promising. This was kind of going on everywhere offshore. And uh, we kind of had an idea that there were probably gonna be fish around because there's a ton of bait in the area and the conditions seem to be pretty nice. So we started off going into the reef. You can hold your breath with me on this dive. You can see this little reef edge. I make the drop right now. I'm on my way down to the bottom and I know there's not like a ton of structure. It's not a huge wreck. It's not gonna probably hold cobia or giant pelagics, but it is a little hump in the middle of the sand and this is perfect for mutton territory. So I'm gonna make sure I get down to the bottom. I'm gonna make sure I throw up some sand and hopefully, even if I don't see a mutton immediately, if I'm down there long enough, the hopes are that a mutton will come off from the sand in the distance, kind of sense the commotion going around this little hump in the middle of nowhere and then come in and hopefully I can land a shot. So now, mainly you do want to check the cracks make sure there's no grouper hanging around just popping their head out and uh, that's what I was doing there just scoping the edge making a drop right on the edge there and uh, I ended up going off on the deeper side in the sand you can see me facing out in the sand and I had a kind of a gut feeling that that's where the muttons were I kicked up some sand um, and most likely they come out from the deeper drop off and sure enough I spot one off in the distance and it is absolutely booking its way into me. There's a smaller mutton right there in front of me but I kind of had my eyes set on that one that's off in the distance. I could tell just by the look of it that it's plenty legal so I made sure I uh, closed the gap, got a nice shot and uh, started heading to the surface. So now on my way up, I'm scouting out, looking for, see if there's any sharks. Usually on stuff like this, sharks don't really hang around there too much. Uh, Jimbo goes down, makes a, kind of secures that I got the shot in the fish, and I'm kind of hanging, hanging down there. And uh, whenever I started to work the fish up, look at this bull shark just come in hot after Jimbo. He doesn't see it at all. You'll see it at the top of the screen right now. shark sniffed your ass. <laughs> Dude, he was like on you. You saw that? I tried to scream at you. So here we go ahead into some deeper stuff. I got the flashers down there and sure enough, here comes a bull shark with a cobia on him. Now I just start charging this guy down into the depths. I think I end up going about 70 feet on this dive and I line up the shot and the freaking shaft just deflects off the top of his head. I should have closed the gap a little more. Um, and one piece of advice I can give you with Cobia is do not take dumb shots. And also, if you don't have a shot, don't worry. Most likely they're gonna swing back around and that's exactly what I should have done on that. So shortly after my buddy Jesse makes a shot, same exact shot that I did, except fortunately for him, his cobia came back and you can see it hiding under this bull shark it has a little chunk of its head taken out where he took a sh long shot on it did the same thing i did uh, but later on we actually ended up getting this fish unfortunately my gopro wasn't running but here's a shot on on photo of the cobia we got and it was chaos we ended up landing this shot we got the fish and uh yeah we were pretty stoked on that So here's our last dive for the day. Um, day's kind of winding down. We're on kind of some rubble piles. 
I make a drop and it is so freaking fishy. And uh, whenever it's fishy like this, just keep your eyes peeled. You know you're gonna see something. Um, and some people might wait for you know bigger fish to come by, but if I see a shooter fish, if I see something that's good eating that I can take home for dinner, I'm plugging it, and that's what I do with these rainbow runners. There's a bunch of them out in the distance. I want to get a nice size one, so I'm making sure I'm being very selective in that. I'm doing some grunting, trying to get them to come in, line up a nice shot, and shoot them right mid-body up by the gills, and I just put the brakes on them. I'm working them in, trying to, uh, my uh, mono got wrapped up on my GoPro a little bit. I had to get it unhooked, uh, but I made sure I got this guy into me. Don't, no need to kind of dangle him down there. I can kind of horse him up, especially these rainbow runners, but these guys are delicious sashimi. So words of advice, always plug a rainbow to get a chance. So when you're diving for these crabs, you're just swimming along these grass flats. You're looking for holes randomly, blindly, shoving your hands inside of them until you get a crab. Once you get it out, make sure you get a hold of both of those claws immediately. And I'm just going to kind of roll through clips of me grabbing and horsing these things out. As well as showing you guys how to properly remove the crab the crab's claws that is i think one of the most important parts so, so another thing that we did along these grass flats you can also find lobster here's a nice size one i kind of gauged it immediately i knew it was definitely legal size and sometimes you can bare hand these things but you have to make sure you they have no escape route through the um through the grass flats make sure that their their hole doesn't go very deep and preferably if you have a snare like this depiction of it uh, i ended up just getting the snare and you can kind of tickle them away from the from the grass flats so you know that they can't shoot into any holes and you see me do this i just take my time patiently till the lobster gives me a perfect angle that i can wrap that snare around its tail cinch down and uh get them um, but here i go back getting after the crabs and here is a solid solid one you can see the nice colossal claws i'm stoked about that one uh, but this is going to show you the proper way to remove the claws you can see how i get the claws i make sure they pinch on one another and then i grab my dive knife and i pinch down at the tip i don't you, you know hold it by the handle because if it slips along the the claw it could stick your hand uh, but it comes off real easily you see me pinching down right at the base right at the knuckle where that claw meets the body you go ahead, twist there until like it digs a little hole and then you just turn your knife to the side and it just pops right off. And uh, I'll give you another example, a little more of a close up in just a minute, but I got another solid one here. And then see how I hold that knife really down to the tip. You just get it and you just sit there and twist, 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 twist. And eventually the knife will go into the claw and once it does, then you turn the knife to the side just like that and don't force it. You see there, I was kind of just testing it nice and easy because the knuckle, the entire inside of the crab can get ripped out and the crab will die. You see me do it with this one right there. It almost just falls off so easily. Such a sustainable resource. I absolutely love it. All right, everybody, we're back at the ramp and we're going to get into those lobster. We already did the crabs. They're basically good to go. Uh, we're gonna go home, steam those guys up, but we're gonna do something really special with the, the big lobster. We got a few of them and uh, we got one really big one. And when you get a big one, that's when you wanna do a whole cooker. So we're gonna do a whole cooker lobster. I haven't done it. My sister Paige has done it. And uh, we're gonna kind of give her a little, run, or get a run through from her on how to do it. And uh, right. that's, what we, that's what we got here. This is our big guy. I went and got a weight, so. This is a makeshift way of doing this, but we're gonna try to split, the idea is to split it completely straight down the back. So, kind of want to start up here because it's the hardest part of the shell. I recommend using a bigger knife, but this is what we got, so. 
also recommend using like a hammer versus a weight, but you know, again, it's working. We're uh, making we're making do with what we got. And then you split down the shell too. The tail. The tail, yeah, of the shell as well. Which might yeah, basically you just half the entire thing all the way down the middle. And then you you have to actually cut it to um, like the actual meat. So we're gonna try to get right between the eyes. There we go. And then kind of split so that you can cut it. You want to split the meat right down the middle. This doesn't really line up, so just make sure you get it meat cut so it looks nice and like a butterfly. Then you want to try to split her open, which is a little difficult. Use a little manpower or woman power. Because what you're trying to do is get those guts out. Oh, cool. <laughs> on my chest. My chest. There we go. Ugh. And then this will split open like a butterfly, like the pretty butterfly you like to see. So there's the poop chute you want to get out. That should come out whole like that. And then you want to, you take all these guts out and the easiest way is with the hose. Yeah, just blast them. Just blast it out. And then you gotta kind of pick at it a little bit. Once you get the goodies out. All right, so we'll nitpick at this thing and uh, we'll show you the final product and we're just basically cleaning uh, all, out, all, all the stuff that doesn't look good. And uh, what we'll be left with is the white meat inside the shell. And that's what we're gonna be putting in the oven. All right, end product after we end product. Look at all that meat up inside. All of this meat up in the head. All, all this like stuff. literally up here in the side. Really, like where if chunk. you if you tail it, it would stop right here. Yeah, so this is almost like a meat. whole nother. And then there's tail. also meat inside the knuckles and inside the legs. So ideally, you want to stuff it in here, like all up in the side of the shell, all up in here. You want to stuff that when you go to bake it. Yeah, and we'll we'll kind of come up with a little mixture of what we're gonna stuff it with. You can do anything you can do. Stuff it with breadcrumbs, rice, pasta, whatever you feel like doing, but we're gonna do something special. So I will see you guys in the kitchen. We are in my kitchen and we are already getting into this lobster. Now I cheated a little bit. We got a pan here. I chopped up a bunch of bacon and I put it in there, sauteed it all. And now there's bacon in there, bacon grease, and I chopped up a bunch of veggies. Now they're in there, there's some peppers, a jalapeno, onion. And then the last thing I'm gonna throw in there is some cauliflower rice. Uh, I went ahead and already heated up everything. I'm gonna stuff, I'm gonna mix everything together. I'm gonna stuff this head just full of all the nice veggies and just flavoring. And then I'm gonna bake the lobster. I haven't done it before. I'm, I don't even have a set time I'm gonna put in there. I just set the oven for 350. I'm gonna cook it nice and slow. Uh, hopefully all the veggies don't like fry. I actually need to season these a little bit. Uh, and I'll probably use just some uh, Southern Palette Wild Game Blend. My, one of my subscribers sent me this and it is good. I use it on my eggs. I use it on basically almost anything I can. But something that's gonna give this stuff a lot of flavor is just the fact that it's soaking in bacon grease. You really can't go wrong with that if you wanna ever stuff something with a flavor, bacon. Oh, I'm just kidding. Real quick, I want to get into a merch drop. Now, I've been kind of using the same merch. It's been very simple, but I got in touch with my buddy Shane Molina on the Hawaiian Islands, and he drew up an absolute epic logo. I have it on shirts. I have it on buffs. I have it on water bottles. If you are interested in that, go ahead and check out the link below or just search CaptainJackMerch.com. That's the website. So go ahead and pick up something, support the channel, rep something freaking awesome. And I'm also going to give a giveaway this episode. Go ahead, comment in this, just comment down below anything. You can just say anything. If you wanna say something about the video, if you wanna say I wanna win the contest, anything like that, comment down below. And if you are one of my patrons, or one of my YouTube members, depending on what tier you are, it will be either times 10, 20, or 30 into the drawing. So if you haven't already, please 
jump onto that YouTube membership or become a Patreon. It'll up your chances of winning a giveaway. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and give away one of the Captain Jack shirts. It'll be your choice. If you win the drawing, I'll drop it on my next video and I will go ahead and get in touch with you, order up that stuff, and ship it out to you guys. But I'm gonna go ahead and add this cauliflower rice to this mixture, mix it all up, then go ahead and get to stuffing. Mix this all in there. I'm just gonna kind of wedge it open a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of just dump it in there. Ain't no other better way than to do that. Right, Tiva? I guess it's okay if you pour some outside because uh, I might want to spread out some. And one thing about lobster is you never really want to overcook it. So that is very nice. Unlike fish, fish is a little easier to cook. Let's check that out. Ooh. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the oven. I'm gonna cook it nice and slow. Let's see if I can get these. You guys, sure enough, I forgot something. I called my sister, thank God she told me. Look at this masterpiece. Butter on the top, that's one thing that she said is a must. And then the other thing is to cover the whole thing in foil. And she said you cook it for about 30 minutes. So I can shut that timer off, I was way off. I was probably gonna fail miserably. Good thing I called her. I'm gonna cover this sucker up with foil, shove it back in, and I'll see you guys whenever it's finished. We'll be real. Ooh, baby. Look at that, all orange. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, I'm gonna grab a fork and I'm gonna dive into this. And we got the white meat inside, it's not that clear meat. And I think this thing will cook a little bit extra, a little bit more. Let me check that head meat, oh God. Yeah, it looks like that head meat is, oh God. Let me just try some. Holy cow. It's not chewy. It's actually probably softer than fish, to be quite honest with you, especially that head meat. Oh my god. All right, I'm gonna plate this guy. It looks kind of like it might be a mess. So I'm gonna kind of pick at it, pull it apart, throw it on a plate, and I will sit over on the table and I'll show you. Oh, I'll just dig in. Um, yeah, this was kind of a lot of work to uh, get this prepped because I got the knuckles and I don't know if I've ever even had a knuckle, um, but it's like the part, part where the base of the antenna goes into the lobster. And I was told it was really good meat. But I'm trying to, I'm trying not to like demolish it, but I got pliers. I think I might just have to crush it. Ooh, God, that looks good. That looks good if I can figure it out. All right, there you go. It almost looks like crab meat. Just need to get rid of the one part. Look at that. It looks like straight crab meat. It tastes similar to crab, but a little more um, lobster texture. Right, I'm gonna move on to the leg, which is something I've never really had before. And I already went ahead and pre-cut this. That's good. That meat is good. Already cut that guy. And yeah, same thing. Gotta get pliers. Crush it. Try to crush it. Oh god, I just squirted it out the camera. Kind of just break it. No point. Yeah, this is like 
are very hard and there's not a lot of meat. So, FYI, if you do ever try. Lost her legs. It's kind of tough. Oh my god. Boy, that's gonna look good. That looks really good. I can get this out. It's gonna be amazing. Look at that lobster leg. It's good. Very salty. Um, a lot of work though. I'm gonna dig into the shell right now. And that meat near the like base where it meets the head. So tender. So good. Stuffing came out perfect too. Ooh, it's spicy. Ooh, really spicy. I'm gonna sit here, finish this. <clears throat> Probably not gonna be able to finish it all tonight. I'm gonna save it for school tomorrow. But I loved showing you guys a new way to catch, cook, and uh, clean uh, lobster. Don't forget you guys, go ahead and check out the new merch, captainjackmerch.com. Support the channel, rep something freaking awesome. But like always guys, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it that thumbs up. Consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. And good luck to whoever wins the giveaway. Like I said, comment below. Also, if you're new, sub to the channel. It helps out a lot. Share the video. And like always guys, I'll see you next week for another adventure. Later.